What is going on, executives? Alex Winking, Michael here, Exec Collects. Hope you all are doing well with another vlog style, walking around type video. Uh, wanted to show you some comics, though. Wanted to show you a few things that I'm going through and processing now. Um, I'm kind of finally getting to a spot where I am winding down on some of these collections that I've purchased and finally have whittled through a lot of things. I ended up PCing quite a bit more than I thought, but figured I would just kind of show you. I'm actually condensing, combining condensing and sort of not necessarily alphabetizing or even doing anything alphanumeric, but at least getting certain series in certain boxes together. Uh, I do a different process, especially when it comes to selling comics. The way that I sort of build mystery boxes and things like that uh, comes from a, a pretty, I, I, don't, I don't think it's like a, a, a defining process or anything like that, or a groundbreaking one rather, but I use a different methodology. But let's take them home over here and we'll kind of show you guys a little bit of what I'm talking about. So right here, this box is a whatnot show box. This is ready to go. This is the show actually... Uh, this will be, I want to say, last Friday's show, if I'm not mistaken, depending on when you watch this video, but um, this show is ready to go. I've got it preloaded. It's good to roll. Now, I'm going to flip this camera here and just kind of show you guys some of the uh, other stuff that I have. Now, some of these collections that I get, uh, as you all are aware, are not all bagged and boarded. So down here is a lot of long boxes <clears throat> that I'm still sorting through. There's not as many now. Finally, I've gotten through... Gosh, I've gotten through tons and tons of long boxes, but these are kind of where I've landed on what to keep. Some of the stuff I will bulk out. Uh, selling comics in bulk is still a, a good part of my business, and uh, I, I like doing that, obviously. But some of this stuff I've decided to hold on to. Now, this is like a substantial <clears throat> Fantastic Four uh, run. I mean... I don't know that there's a whole lot. Well, there's a 194, but I don't know that there's a whole lot of like big keys in here. I've sort of just bulked them out, you know, just kind of put them all together. There's a 256. I mean, really good stuff here. A little 60 cent goodness on that. I mean, I need to get these bad boys bagged and boarded desperately, though. But as you can kind of see, this is sort of what we're dealing with here. Uh, what do we got here? We got a 268 that the camera's not focusing on. Got multiple copies of that. Uh, kind of cool to get a newsstand, but these things are in pretty good condition for the fact that they're not bagged and boarded. Uh, we'll kind of step over here. Love the anniversary border on that bad boy. <clears throat> a little bit of incognito thing. You know, 329, 334, 35. Uh, there's obviously uh, multiples of some of these, but I mean, I've got a really nice run. Now, again, not all of these are, uh, you know, we're not into like the meat and potatoes of just the Fantastic Four Amazing Keys. I wonder what's in this box. I started sorting. Oh, yeah. This is all Avengers, I want to say. Yeah. This is all a bunch of Avengers here that I have. And again, a lot of 75 cent and lower is what I kind of look to do. Sometimes I'll keep some dollar issues depending on what they are. This box here is a little bit more modern stuff, I think. Oh, uh, maybe not. There's a couple Hercules ones in the limited series. Another Hercules one, Prince of Power. Uh, a lot of Hercules. Okay, so no, this is some older stuff that it didn't really kind of fit a theme. But there's an Action Comics, uh, 25 cent, little Bronze Age goodness there. Old Aquaman, 35 cent, Bronze Age. I mean, not too shabby. Right here, these ones that are blue taped up, <clears throat> these are actually full runs or even like story runs. So we've got Man Bat here. Uh, this is one through five, I want to say. Yeah, it's a whole set. So kind of cool to see. A little Crime Classic set. Uh, and again, all of this stuff will be bagged and boarded in Mylar and uh, Mylite, so E-Gerber products. So I will, I will actually change even these. Like this has a very good looking bag and board. Uh, at face value, but <clears throat> it'll still get put. The, it'll still get the same treatment as a uh, as any other comic, whether it goes into my PC or for sale. I'll still put it in a uh, E Gerber My Light and fullback. <clears throat> but here's Hawkeye one, kind of cool to see. Oh, this is the full series. This is not taped. So there's one, two, three, and four in that run. Uh, man, more Hercules. No, there's a little Miss Marvel run right there. It's not too bad. Good looking cover. So yeah, I mean, I kind of have these at least somewhat grouped. I want to say these are all issue number ones here. Yeah, <clears throat> that's House of X, Fantastic Four, first issue. Uh, looks like some 90s goodness. There's a Thor 6. That is definitely not a first issue. Uh, I want to say that's the secret variant of whatever that guy's name, Black something. <laughs> I can't remember, but that is, uh, I want to say the secret. There's an X-Men one. Pretty cool. Not too shabby. So you kind of get to gist. So as I sort these... 
you know, if, if it's a big bulk of stuff, obviously these will get the, uh, these will kind of get that treatment of getting put together. You know, it's a lot of Fantastic Four and short boxes, stuff like that. These are just old short boxes too uh, that I probably picked up from a collection. I just held on to them. But again, it's, it's more about getting stuff off the floor. And I want to kind of show you a little bit of where we are making our priorities. We walk over here and sort of look at what, I, what we're going to start bagging and boarding here soon probably because I have a need for it. So as you know, when I make mystery boxes, I make them, uh, I always put a virgin variant in there. I always put a signed book with a COA in there, um, if I can. Uh, sometimes I have to go with no COA. And I have to do a lot of, uh, uh, you know, and I try to put different eras and different spanning. I just try to make sure all the bases are covered. So some of these, uh, these have an immediate need to get bagged and boarded. Uh, just like the foil goodness of that uh, X-Men book. There's a New Mutants 100. Very minor key, but still something cool. Fantastic Four 387. Love this, man. I hadn't actually ever seen this before. And this is why I love getting comics. You know, everybody, you know, if you, you drag me on the mystery box or whatever, but I love this uh, Invisible Girl here. They're dead. Johnny and Ben, I saw them die. Fantastic Four 387. Look at that foil goodness on that. That is sparkling. That's really awesome. Uh, I just had never seen that issue. Here's some Virgin variants here. We got a, it looks like Horizon Zero Dawn. Uh, I want to say that this is this is a Peach Momoko, but I thought this was either an exclusive or it might even be a ratio. I don't know. But these are all virgin variants here, I think. Oh, no, we got some Scotty Young goodness, too. So uh, there's a little Street Fighter, I think. Not sure what issue that is. Garbage Pail Kids. That's pretty cool. Oh, that's a uh, Incredible Hawk homage. That's really neat. Uh, that's kind of cool. I didn't really notice that until then. More Scotty Young goodness. Uh, ooh, we got a little Venom Virgin variant here, <clears throat> like that. But again, these are over here to get changed out for bags and boards. Uh, okay, there's a lot going on, a little Hawkeye going on here. And then over here, we actually have some signed books here that we're just going to get changed out. A little Slumber, um, looks like Vanish number one, that has a COA. Ninja Funk, we got some Ninja Funk, look at that. <laughs> signed Ninja Funk, Street Level Hero, there you go. Yahtzee, the big winners here. But you kind of get the gist of what we're doing. And kind of, you know, again, it's all based on priority more so than anything. That's kind of the rub. Is It's, it's priority driven based on what needs we have for the business to make the boxes or make uh, lots to sell and whatnot. Like, as a matter of fact, <clears throat> that's actually a good exercise too. Obviously, clearly I didn't have a plan when making this video, but this is a good thing to show you. Uh, as we kind of go through this, I want to show you kind of what a whatnot auction lot looks for me. So I try to make themed lots. That's sort of what I do. So like this first one here is just, you know, stray dogs, dog days. This is a trade and virgin variant. Um, you know, the, the same thing. So those two books there. Sorry, I got to get used to this camera vlog here. Um, as we kind of go through, we have a, a Green Lantern set. <clears throat> um, this is two Green Lantern books. This, this one's actually double signed. I want to say Moose Bowman and Ethan Van Skyver, of all people. So, again, I always try to at least put two book lots together unless it's just a big key or I have nothing that I can theme it with. Uh, that doesn't work. There's a new Sagi Yojimbo trade virgin. Uh, okay, here's a little run right here. Here's Predator 2. Pretty cool little book, uh, two book run. I'll kind of bring that a little closer, but yeah, I mean, two book run there. So I usually try to do two book lots if I can, and then sometimes I'll do like three and four if it makes sense, if they're themed, and then obviously I'll do runs as well. So I could do, uh, <clears throat> um, again, I, I could do like a story run if it's like a four or five limited issue series or whatever, I would put those together as well. Um, and that's sort of how I theme them. And then I'll space things out sort of based on how I think the show is going to flow. So there's a lot of intentionality behind that uh, with what I do. And, you know, so I'm going to start with some of this stuff that's a little bit hotter than normal, but not super hot so you don't get crushed when you're doing a live auction. And then you kind of build into the better stuff as people get in there. Uh, <clears throat> it's kind of what my experience has been a little bit. But again, there's no proven formula uh, of success. I mean, what not is what it is, and uh, you can you can get crushed or you can uh, you can be a winner. I mean, there's just no there's just no really in between. It would appear, but yeah, I kind of feel like that was a good little screenshot of sort of what I do. At least some of the methodology, the method behind the madness. Uh, as I sort of look at, back at like live selling and like what I'm doing, I'm not entirely sure what direction I'm going to go in. You know, 
This is the first time that I've been this close to the finish line as far as collections go uh, of getting through them. And it's kind of a good feeling because I've been under the weight of just so many comic books forever. Uh, so I'm not entirely sure if I want to continue to add to those positions or what the, the next move is. Sorry, I want to get this camera <laughs> kind of away a little bit. So I got to kind of figure that out a little bit. I got to kind of see what direction I want to go. Uh, I know I want to tone down the, the shows uh, quite a significantly. I need to find other avenues to sell and kind of move things as well. If I even want to continue in that direction, uh, there is a probability that I just kind of move on from sales as, as a whole. Uh, you know, I've, I've kind of got my collection where I want it to be. I've added quite a bit of PC books from these acquisitions. So, you know, I'm, I'm in that same collector's conundrum that we all are in. Uh, versus <clears throat> do I buy, do I sell, do I let some stuff go to get better stuff? Uh, it's the never-ending cycle of being a collector, and I'm definitely glad to be a part of it and be in there, but I'm sort of hitting that point where it wouldn't be a bad thing to take a break because I do a lot of volume, and when I mean take a break, I just mean like from buying all these volumes of comics and maybe just hone in on a couple mega keys or something. Um, not to say I wouldn't get some more mystery boxes and take a shot there. That's not what I mean. It's just, just when you get thousands of comic books, and you got to go through them, rebag and board them, sort through them. And I always take that extra step of rebagging and boarding them. It can become pretty time consuming to say the least. So <clears throat> anyway, uh, interested to hear how you all are doing with your collections. Just wanted to give you a little update video, show you a little bit of uh, behind the scenes stuff. Hopefully these things are tolerable. I'm still getting used to holding this camera and doing the vlog style, but Nonetheless, I appreciate you all being on the journey with me. You all are the best part of this, and uh, I'm just so, so grateful. It's been good to be on some live streams with some folks here in the last few weeks as well. Uh, big, big thank you to Brian LCS, DJ Lynx, uh, for bringing me on. Man, I had an absolute blast. So, yeah, I'm just, uh, just kind of plodding along, curious to hear your updates on your collecting goals and things you have going on, if you're buying, you're selling, whatever it is you're doing. Uh, really, really appreciate you uh, let, sharing it with us and letting us know what you have going on and what works. So, as always, I'm Alex Winking, Michael at Exec Collects, and that is it for this one. And I really hope I will see you all on the next one.